My name is Joe Haslam, I'm a professor at IE Business School, and uh, you know, here one of the things we do, we, you know, in class every day, is we talk about cases. You know, we talk about genuine business problems. So it's quite attractive for me uh, to talk about something which is exactly the kind of thing we talk about in class, which is uh, the transformation that uh, Philip Morris or, or PMI, as, as some people call them, are going through. Uh, business can be very boring when it's more of the same, but Philip Morris are in a situation similar to the oil majors or similar to perhaps you could even say Coca-Cola, whereby they're faced with the transformation. They're faced with, you know, do you try and just live off the legacy, in, in their case over 100 years, or do you try an actual transform? And, uh, you know, I read the business press like you would express from a business professor in, in places like the FT and The Economist, they, they talk about the smoke-free future. So uh, it's interesting to get somebody, and I, you know, I also think it's great that, that Enrique will come to public forums and, and talk to us about this. So very much looking forward to spending about 15 minutes talking. So let me start by welcoming you, Enrique. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Joe. We were talking in Spanish indeed before, so <laughs> I don't think we need to test that better than my English. Well, we, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I love speaking in, in Spanish, but uh, we, 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 you know, we, we're trying to, um, it's the 10th year anniversary, so after 10 years, uh, we, we're going to keep speaking in English. Uh, I should, of course, mention you are, of course, an alumni of I Business School, which uh, that's uh, also wonderful to have you. So let me just quote directly from the Financial Times, which is to say, um, in a recent investor call, the phrase smoke-free was uttered more than 40 times on the investor call to discuss the deal. So is, is everything you're talking about in PMI this smoke-free future? Indeed, I have to say that it uh, really is, yeah, and it might look quite paradoxical because at the end of the day, PMI, Philip Morris, is the largest cigarette manufacturer in the world, but the reality is that we believe that is possible a uh, future that is smoke-free. And we believe in this because it doesn't come just by chance, it's, it comes as, after almost two decades of investigation, almost $9,000 uh, million dollars spent on, on, the, on the subject, uh, with more than 1,000 scientists enrolled in Philip Morris progressively in order to create something that is science-based. And uh, the reality is that it's true. It's true that we can, because we do have products that have a different risk profile than conventional cigarettes, and also because we should, because in fact what we are doing is answering a demand that was coming from society since long ago. Yeah? And because what we are seeing is that the number of smokers in the world is not decreasing at the pace that it should. And that in fact, of course, we agree that the best thing is not to smoke, yeah? not to start. And if you smoke already to quit, but if you're not going to quit, then change, because I think that there is hope for those that otherwise would continue smoking, that we have today products that are radically different, fundamentally different, that cigarettes, that in the 21st century should be a product of the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess talk to me about these alternatives. I mean, we, we know vaping and we know, I mean, there's this sort of, uh, I, a friend of mine lives in Switzerland and he has, he puts the things into his mouth and things like that. So yes. what, what areas, okay, if I came to you and I said, Enrique, I, you know, I'm an occasional smoker, I don't mind saying, uh, but if I came to you and said, okay, I, I never want to smoke again, what, what alternatives can you offer me? Well, the reality is that there is a very strong misconception about uh, what is the biggest threat when you are smoking, and this misconception revolves around nicotine tar. The reality is that the main problem is combustion. It is the fact that you are burning a cigarette at very high temperatures that make that many components of the cigarette, they uh, change, transform into carcinogens. And uh, as a matter of fact, the moment you avoid combustion and you simply heat the cigarette and avoid high temperatures, toxicity decreases strongly, up to 90 to 95%. Uh, yeah? This is why it is also important to say that all these products, and you mentioned the electronic cigarettes or our own product, Icos, these are not innocuous. Mm -hmm. So the best alternative is really to quit but they are a fundamentally better option than to continue smoking. And this is why I said that in the 21st century, it doesn't make any sense to smoke. Either you quit or you come to these alternatives. 
Hmm. Uh, and what about, I mean, targets, we have to talk targets. I mean, the, the target I've read uh, is 50% of revenue from non-smoke uh, products by 2025, which is yes. three years' time. Around um, the corner. Yeah. So is that a target? Uh, you, you know, you expect, uh, <laughs> you, is that a target you expect to hit? Well, it's not a target that I expect to hit, it's that I better hit it. Because, in fact, uh, I'm responsible for the Iberia Peninsula, and this is a worldwide target. And, of course, the markets that I run need to commit to this target as well. So, as you mentioned, uh, we need, by 2025, to reach 50% at least of our revenues with this category. Uh, indeed, we are not that far, if you think of it, because we are at 30% today, and I'm mentioning results coming from the first quarter. Uh, still, we have these 20 percentage points that we need to cover. Today, in the world, we have around 21 million users mm -hmm. for ICUS, but uh, we simply need to make it much closer to 40 rather than to the current 20. Yeah? Sure. I mean, and how does that change your day-to-day -day in terms of, like, internal, uh, I mean, do, have you separated completely? In other words, like, you, you're smoke and you're non-smoke, or, or is, are people responsible for, for moving both targets? I think that, and this has been a process, but quite abrupt. Uh, if I can a little bit uh, dig into history, in 2014, we did the first test that was in Nagoya, Japan, and in Milano, in Italy, and as a result of which we decided to proceed with the commercialization. And since then, for those of us that at that point in time were in Philip Morris, and also for those that joined later, it has been an incredible adventure, not exempt of pain, because to be very honest, if I put together the amount of things that I needed to learn is humongous, but if I put together the, kind, the, the amount of things that I need to unlearn, it was equally, equally big. And I think that, uh, of course, we had a lot of support. And I think that the biggest support that we got is that from the very top of the company, there was a completely unproportional attention that was devoted to these kind of products. And since day one, even when these products were nothing, almost 100% of the time and investment was put into achieving this goal of 2025. What made our life of, uh, as employees much easier, yeah? Because it is easier said than done, but in this case it was really done, meaning 100% focus and commitment to this mission of achieving this smoke-free world. Now, there were, you can't imagine the enormous uh, amount of uh, subjects where I didn't have a clue, mm -hmm. uh, science, uh, logistics, uh, digital, because at the time we were not using any kind of uh, digital communication. The biggest transformation maybe was to fold that. The first one is that we were dealing with iconic brands, uh, especially Marlboro, which is by far the largest cigarette in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah? And as a result, we were profoundly brand-centric. Everything we did with the brand was scrutinized by so many people. Attention to detail was amazing. And I tell you, as a marketeer, very nice, very nice brand to work with, but really paying attention to brand values, brand territories, and uh, exceptional execution. Uh, I think that was all very nice, but where is the consumer in all this picture? We had to move from a very brand-centric company into a very consumer-centric company. And uh, again, uh, uh, for this, we began to work even with KPIs. We were far from being used to utilize, for example, NPS, Net Promoter Score. Today for us is like the Bible. Everybody in the company knows about the NPS. That is the opinion that consumers give to our brands and to the different touch points where we interact with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, to do a vast yeah, change in order to become much more consumer-centric than brand-centric. And if you ask me, what are you? I think we are much better than we were, but this is a never-ending journey. Yeah? So I think that uh, this path is already open and, and and uh, we are already very much into it, but still we need to continue working on this. And the second one was, apart from transiting from brand centrism to consumer centrism, 
was about the ways of working. Because uh, I recall very well, and, and just by chance this weekend, it was the 25th anniversary that I ended the MBA. Can you imagine 25 <laughs> years ago? I'm not too far, I'm, I'm, I'm not too far behind. Well, I tell you, case, it was so. black and white slides <laughs> at, uh, at the time. Yes. Yeah, but it was very joyful yeah. Yeah, uh, to, to be again with all my teammates from yeah. 25 years ago. By the way, we look radically different, except a couple of them that I don't know what they did, but they look better. Yeah. But uh, my point was that those days we were deeply talking about innovation. Yeah? Innovation was really the buzzword, and from an academic perspective, surprisingly enough, the final solution to the conundrum of how innovative companies uh, can be was not given by multinationals such as Philip Morris, or you mentioned some others before. It was given by small companies, startups, yeah, and we had to acquire many of the tools that the startup used, like trial and error, testing, words that for us, we were not used to A-B testing. If we are going to do a campaign, we know what we do, we do it big and we do it large, and then uh, uh, we expect the results. Uh, it doesn't work like this in this century. It is much more A-B testing, much more different ways of uh, working, trying to fail early and to fail cheap. Yeah. It's, I rather mean, it's than failing like late it, it, and it's like a startup in, in that sense. Exactly, and I think that this, if you ask me, were the kind of things that, on the personal uh, side, uh, were more difficult to me. Yeah, right. Consumer centrism and new ways of new ways of working. Sure. So, I mean, as I'm sure you could well understand, uh, you know, when we survey all our best graduates, the health of a company is is based on that they can attract the best people, right? And right now, our best people go to Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple. That's, that's where they go, right? So, I mean, is there a pitch you can make to them that, that they should come to work in, in Philip Morris? Well, I, I, you've talked about big companies, companies that I personally admire, yeah? But uh, uh, we need young talent. We need all talent. We need all kind of talent because what we want to achieve is massive. We want to kill cigarettes, and we want to replace them by these new alternatives. I think that is such a nice mission, such a large one, such a thrilling one, yeah, yeah. that uh, we die for the talent. And I have to tell you that uh, uh, I think that also in the eyes of many people, our employability has improved, meaning people feel that Philip Morris is a better option today than, than it might have been in the past. And the truth is that we don't have enormous issues to attract talent. We still receive a lot of talent. But what I can ensure people is that the journey is amazingly thrilling and amazingly fun, but not easy. So uh, this is not for yeah, people that is not very much focused and concentrated. This is a tough call, but so rewarding and so thrilling. Yeah, I think that at Philip Morris, I would like to think that our HR policy, our hiring policy, is about recruiting the best, and this is about selecting, then making them unique, and this is about developing people, and then allowing them to be themselves. Because I think that uh, we know very well in academia how important is diversity for companies, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make any sense that you come to a company and then you are obliged to behave the same way that all others behave. Then uh, you might have a different gender, yeah. but behaviors are, are the same. And I would like to think that on this path, which is not easy, we are also, also improving. And just, I mean, we're, we've about three minutes left now, but I mean, I want to ask you specifically about Spain. I, I mean, as I say, there's what's called the continental breakfast, which is a coffee and a cigarette, you know. It's, uh, but I mean, what do you think your challenges will be in Spain? I mean, the one thing I've noticed here is cigarettes are not that expensive. They're much more expensive in, in, in Ireland and, and France and other countries. So what are your particular challenges in Spain to move to a, a smoke-free future? Okay, uh, let me compare with Portugal, which is also a country that is run uh, um, by us. Yeah? Since November, Icos is the largest brand in the tobacco market in Portugal. It just overtook Marlboro. So today, in Portugal, it is larger than, larger than, than Marlboro. Yeah? In Spain, we are going slower, and to me, the biggest challenge is to explain to those that smoke that they should quit or change. Because there in Spain, the misconception, the lack of information about uh, 
what is exactly the main issue uh, about the smoking is large. You see a lot of people that is concerned about the nicotine. Nicotine is addic addictive and is not innocuous, but the biggest, uh, uh, the largest problem by far is combustion, is burning. And uh, I think that this is my biggest challenge. We are investing a lot of time, a lot of attention, a lot of money in order to try to inform as much as we can uh, uh, smokers. By the way, those that are mostly uh, utilizing our brands, because we are market leaders here in Spain, that doesn't make any sense. And that they should go through this uh, journey with us and, uh, and we should transform. This is for me the, 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 biggest, the biggest challenge, I think, that in this respect, we might be at a different point than in other countries, but if we manage to break this through, I think uh, uh, evolution is going to be faster. Yeah. Um, would you support increasing the price of cigarettes? Well, I think that at the end of the day, I'm not uh, the government of the country. I think there are so many... You are asking me something very complex in the sense that every country is different, that you have to be attentive to some side phenomena. Uh, like uh, illicit trade and the disparity of prices with those neighboring countries, especially in the European Union, when uh, goods are free to move. And then on top, we have to understand that different categories have different taxation. Now, if your question is, are cigarettes cheap in Spain? Well, you are Irish, you know the prices uh, that exist in Ireland. We have France with more than double the price uh, uh, than Spain. So if you ask me, yes, I think pricing plays a role in uh, discouraging people from smoking. And I think, uh, yes, the price of cigarettes could be higher in Spain. Now, a different thing, and this is more specific, is uh, I also believe that the efforts company put into innovation should be helped, should be fostered by governments with different taxation for different products. And I think that products of the 21st century shouldn't have the same taxation as products of the uh, 20th century. Uh, but overall, yes, my answer is yes, there is a space. Okay, well, I congratulate you on a, you have no future in politics, Enrique, because you've answered a straight question with a straight answer. So, you know, <laughs> you know stay, stay with Philip Morris uh, rather than uh, answering the question directly, which is, I congratulate you on that. So uh, we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much to the audience for, for staying here and listening to us. Uh, and thank you very much to Enrique. Can I have a round of applause, please? Thank you very much.